All right, so welcome. You probably hit on this because you're interested in either figuring out how these zero exponents work or you're interested in to this zero to the power of zero. Now, I have done an introduction to exponents where I did talk about zero exponents and that introduction, actually I'm gonna link it so you're gonna be able to see it up on top and you, you can view that video if you haven't seen that introduction to exponents because I think it's a worthy one to watch before you start diving into this. Now, if you're already familiar with exponents, great. I am just gonna concentrate on the zero exponent because it brings about typically a few questions from students. Now, in reality, you very rarely will run into zero to the zero in everyday life. In fact, probably never, to be honest with you. The only time you start running into these is later on, maybe in your education, as you start dealing with some functions and limits and calculus and crap like that, basically. Now, if you're watching this because you're just curious, great. Now, understanding zero exponents is still important. Understanding zero to the power of zero, maybe not as important unless you really are keen to try to figure stuff out and just see like, okay, well, what does this mean? Okay, so in the introduction video, I talked about zero exponents. So let me do a little bit of a brief uh, overview. So now I'm concentrating on, so with these zero exponents, so what we have, I'm basically talking about things of this nature. So if we have two to the power of zero, if we have three to the power of zero, four to the power of zero, you have even 10 to the power of zero. It doesn't really matter. The number can be as big as you like. So what do these numbers equal? Now, if you've watched the introduction to exponents, you will notice that actually all of these are equal to one. And now for some people, they really don't care why. They'll be like, okay, I guess a number raised to the power of zero is just one. That's what it is. Now, it seems odd, okay? But what I will say is, okay, the following. So if we take two to the power of zero, I don't think that anyone will question that we can rewrite this as two to the power of one minus one because we know that one minus one is just equal to zero. And this brings about the question, of course, of just regular exponents, you know, what is two to the one and what is two to the minus one? If we know the answer to that, we can answer what two to the zero, or in fact, what any number to the zero is. And as you know, so for exponents, if you just have two to the power of one, this just equals to two because you're just multiplying two by itself just once. So in reality, it is just one, two. Now, the other question is, of course, what is two to the negative one? And for negative exponents, it's actually division that you are referring to. And that's what I uh, encourage you to watch in that introduction video. So two to the negative one really means just divided by two, or very commonly, people will just write it kind of in fractional form when it is one, okay, all over two. So if we know that and we have these two, okay, so notice that is two, two to the power of one, and then two to the negative one is divided by two. So now I can literally just take this right here. So let me copy it and bring it down. Okay, I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit bigger. So this right here is simply two divided by two. Well, we know that anything divided by itself is just equal to one. Or of course, as I said, you can rewrite this as two and then you can take this right here, which is in this format, so that still is equal to one. So a number raised to the power of zero is actually equal to one. You can remember that and it basically comes from right here. Now, 
you can do that with any number. So this actually, if I took one of these last ones right here, let's say 239. So if I had, so let me write 239 to the power of zero, this again, you could rewrite as 239, one minus one, and that would just simply mean 239, which is 239 to the power of one, and then divided by, because that's the negative one, so this would be that, and of course it equals to one. So that's what we would have. The only thing you have to be careful with this power of zero is the fact that if you have, so let's say I will have negative five and I raise it to the zero. Here, be careful because when you're writing this in math, what we do is we will say that this zero actually applies only to the five. It does not apply to that negative in front. So if that would be the case, then this actually equals, so this right here, so let me box this in here for you. So five to the zero is equal to one, but then our negative kind of still stays in front. Okay, so you have to be careful when you write this. This is much different than if you just wrote negative five, okay, to the zero. In this case, this indeed is just equal to one because what you would do with that, this would just be negative five. Again, remember, okay, so this is all in brackets and it's one minus one. So what this would be is negative five divided by negative five, which indeed, so the negatives would cancel and it would be equal to one. While the other one, so this one, right here. So if you're looking at that, so in this case, that negative is in front and that zero does not apply to it. So just be careful. So those are zero exponents. So you can basically do anything. So if I would ask you, okay, some crazy number here, it can be honestly a decimal, it doesn't matter. And I raise this to the zero. Well, what's the answer? That's right, okay, if in your mind you're saying that this is just simply as one. Now, if you wrote one, let's say this to the zero, well, what's the answer? Be careful, okay? So in this case, it is minus one because that negative was not in brackets, okay? So it will stay in front, all right? So that will be it that I'll have to say about the zero exponents. Now, what about zero to the zero? So this is interesting, and this is just really honestly for those, okay, who are just kind of keen and interested, okay, in understanding what this is. So based on what I wrote, so this is zero, and let's say zero is one minus one, and by the way, you don't have to put one minus one. You can put two minus two, or three minus three. It's something that equals to zero. So that all of those will actually work. Now on this, okay, if we have, so this is basically saying zero to the one and then zero to the minus one, okay? So that is equal to zero and it is divided by zero. Okay, so this is where that comes from. Okay, so again, remember this is just one over zero. Okay, and zero to the one is just zero. So what you have is this particular item now that you have to worry about. And this comes back to kind of redefining. So if you've ever watched um, number sets, and for example, I believe that I actually did a video, so I'm gonna link that up on top as well if you wanted to, to kind of review your number sets and rational numbers, you will recall <clears throat> that if you ever try, okay, so zero over zero, so this, okay, is indeterminate. Indeterminate. We can actually not determine what the answer is. We need a little bit more information in order to figure out. So zero to the power of zero, you know, if you watch some other videos, some people will say it is equal to one. 
Uh, some people will say it's undefined. Um, so in reality, then it means it's indeterminate. We cannot actually determine what zero to the zero is. And that will be dependent on context. And that's why I said, if you're ever running into zero over zero, in reality, when you're starting math, for example, like grade nine or something even maybe earlier or grade 10, it may not make a big difference to you. When you get into knowing about functions and limits and maybe calculus or something of that nature, then you might start running into these problems of zero over zero and you will want to know what they are. And those are always the annoying questions as you go on in math and trying to solve these particular things. But from this definition, okay, so the way that we have it, this is just zero over zero. And zero over zero is indeterminate with this given information. If we have nothing else, all you can say is, I just don't know. Which, by the way, is a very good thing. Once you start realizing that, you know what, uh, hell with it, I, I just don't know, uh, which is most of the time, probably, kind of like me. Uh, so you slowly try to figure stuff out. Okay, so zero over zero, okay, we do not know, it's indeterminate, and you can kind of keep it that way unless you get into a little bit later on in your studies in math, and then you, you might run into something else. All right, so if someone tells you different, uh, question it. Okay, you should probably question it and figure out, okay, why? Okay, why are they saying it? Because it, you, you cannot actually determine. All right, so thank you for watching. That is all that I want to say about zero exponents. I do hope that you find this useful. You can leave a comment if you like. Hit a like, okay, if you found it useful. And you can continue on with the videos. All right, okay, cheers.